Hey, I'm Alec, and today we're going to talk about how to anneal HDPLA and tough PLA. PLA is a fantastic 3D printing filament because of just how easy it is to print with, which makes it great for newcomers, and because of just how many different colors you can find it in. But it doesn't have the thermal resistance that other materials do. In fact, if you take a PLA print and leave it in a hot car on a summer day, it's going to deform or at worst collapse. Using a heat gun, we simulated what might happen if you left a PLA print in a car. Fortunately, there are derivatives to PLA that seek to be the next step in its evolution in the form of Matter Hacker's Tough PLA and Protopasta's HJPLA. Let's take a look. Matter Hacker's Pro Series Tough PLA and Protopasta's HTPLA both fill the same niche of providing easy to print capabilities while still being able to bring the properties of more advanced materials into the picture. The key to unlocking these properties is a process called annealing, where you gradually heat up a material to a specific temperature, let it stay at that temperature, and then cool down slowly. This will manage and change the internal stresses of that material, thereby creating a stronger part. By annealing your 3D prints, you dramatically increase their glass transition temperature. So instead of getting soft at say 55 degrees Celsius, they can survive as high as 85 degrees Celsius without deforming. And annealing also makes your 3D prints more impact resistant, more so than regular PLA or even ABS. And tough PLA and HTPLA, whether or not you choose to anneal them, sand easier than regular PLA. So post-processing becomes a much easier task than before as well. Annealing works by taking a plastic to a hot enough temperature to allow its structure to start changing, going from something more amorphous to a more crystalline structure. But this change causes some repositioning and reorienting that can cause your print to shrink and grow in different ways. In general, 3D prints will shrink in the X and Y and grow taller in the Z, and that really depends on the geometry of the 3D print part as well. So if you have something more mechanically designed, like a vise or even the jaws, those might fare better just because of their big blocky nature that they don't want to warp in really uncontrolled ways. First thing you need to do is adjust your print settings. Since annealing is just essentially directed stressing of your 3D prints, you need to make sure that it doesn't have any sort of sparsity in it that might cause it to shrink and warp in uncontrolled ways. Which is why all the manufacturers recommend that you just print them at 100% infill using a lines infill pattern. Other infill patterns tend to leave small voids if you use them instead of lines at 100%, so just keep it simple, 100% infill using the lines infill pattern. Once your part is finished printing, get it as clean as possible by removing any brims or minor imperfections, like we've got some stringing on this print and there's a little blobs here and there, so I'll make sure to trim those off before we do anything. From here, you can use one of two methods to anneal your 3D printed parts. If you have something small, you can go with method one, where you just have a container that's a little bit bigger than your part and put that into the oven, and that's to keep it contained on all sides. But not every model is going to be this small, you may have something a lot larger, and that may just need to go with method two. So this is method one. Find an oven safe container, like a glass or metal bowl, that's larger than your 3D printed part and leaves around two inches of space around it on all sides. Add at least two inches of fine sand to the bottom of the container and place your part on top of it. Then you can gently pour sand all around it and make sure to fill all the voids within the part. By adding sand, you're supporting your printed part on all sides so it can't warp or shrink nearly as much as it would without the support. Go ahead and preheat your oven to 95 to 115 degrees Celsius or 200 to 230 degrees Fahrenheit and let it hold temperature for 10 minutes to make sure the oven has had enough time to stabilize and not overshoot the set temperature. Then insert the sand pack bowl and leave it in for an hour to make sure the sand has enough time to fully heat up and transfer that to your part. After the hour is up, insert a thermometer into the sand to make sure the internal temperature is the same as what the oven's thermometer reads to know that your part is adequately heated. Remove the container and let it cool to room temperature. For method two, you're gonna preheat your oven to 95 to 150 degrees Celsius or 200 to 230 degrees Fahrenheit and let it hold temperature for 15 minutes. Again, to make sure it has enough time to hold the temperature steady and not overheat your parts. 
After that time has passed, set your printed parts on a tray and leave them in the oven for six to 10 minutes. You should be able to see your part flex a little as it crystallizes and then stabilizes its form. Then you can take them out and let them cool to room temperature. You may notice that your part has shrunk or changed shape slightly. In that case, you may be able to reprint your part to account for the shrinkage and growth. Like if a 100 millimeter long block shrunk to 99.5 millimeters, then you would want to scale it up so it shrinks down to 100 millimeters after annealing. And really that's all there is to it. It's not an exact science, but by the end of this, you should have a 3D print that will withstand temperatures better than it would have before annealing and have a little extra strength in general as well. Even still, you can sand and finish these 3D prints just as well as you could before, so you can still get your parts presentation ready. I hope that this video encourages you to experiment with HGPLA and Tough PLA and see how you can incorporate these new material properties. If you regularly anneal and heat treat your 3D prints and have some helpful tips for me, I'd love to hear more in the comments down below and I'm sure the community would appreciate learning a little more as well. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching.